Hello, so I am going to talk a little bit about exercise and pregnancy and what my prenatal care plan would be for clients in the future. Um, I currently, when we discuss exercise where I work, um, we typically kind of ask or assess um, at the first visit how active the person is. Um, if it's someone who's coming from uh, being super active already, like they are involved in uh, running or if they just exercise in general uh, pretty regularly, then we don't discourage that, obviously. We would um, encourage them to keep exercising if they're doing like weightlifting or um, strength training. Um, most of that stuff can still be done. Um, and so we do encourage those people to continue exercising the way that they um, have been because of all of the um, benefits to regular exercise in pregnancy. So that's another thing that we like to talk about, you know, usually in the first visit um, is, you know, the benefits to exercise during pregnancy because I think a lot of people um, feel like exercise can be risky in pregnancy. Um, but the benefits definitely outweigh any kind of cons that there would be. Um, there's a higher um, higher chance of a vaginal delivery, a shorter labor process. Um, evidence has shown us that um, there's less gestational diabetes, gestational diabetes, um, less um, excess weight gain, um, blood pressure. You typically the can avoid hypertension that way. Um, preterm labor, there's less preterm labor, less C sections, um, lower risk of um, low birth weight, and even for the babies, it could be higher APGAR scores. And because there's a less risk of gestation gestational diabetes, um, you're setting up the baby for optimal health in the future. So. Um, what's recommended right now is about 150, um, moderate, 150 minutes per week of moderate exercise. So that boils down to about 30 minutes per day, um, five days a week. So, you know, and if it's, if it's a client that's not, um, exercising currently or is not on a, um, exercise program currently, um, we encourage them to just, you know, take, start slow um, if time is an issue or, um, you know, whatever the, uh, barrier may be, you can start slowly, um, parking your car farther away from the store when you go to run errands, um, taking a bike to run errands, if that's a possibility, um, where I live, that's not typically an, a, a possibility, um, it would be kind of dangerous or risky, we live in the desert, so, um, the temperatures have been soaring above 100 degrees already. So that's one thing, outdoor exercise for um, pregnant people in our area is sometimes limited to um, early mornings or afternoons. So I know a lot of people right at dusk will like to take a walk. Um, so we encourage that. Um, if you are used to doing vigorous exercise, that is still okay to enjoy Um about 75 minutes per week is the recommendation, but if you're able to do more than that, then that's great. Um, another thing like avoiding the elevators and taking stairs, just simple things like that. Um, walking the dog, um, there are prenatal yoga classes and prenatal exercise classes, I think at our local YMCA. Um, so that's a good resource um, if you're wanting a more structured environment to um, motivate you to um, exercise. Um, another thing that motivates me is a fitness tracker. Um, I have this Apple Watch and it tracks all of my movement and lets me know that just everyday activity without exercise is not enough. Um, you can set goals for yourself. You can, you know, challenge people, which is awesome. Um, I know I've challenged my husband a few times and it's really motivating to do stuff like that. Um, it really helps with the accountability part. So um, another thing that we would assess in the first um, trimester would be, are there any injuries um, preventing you from doing exercise? 
any restrictions and how we can go about accommodating that. In the second trimester, we'll probably just do a check-in and see how um, the person's doing and if they're staying on track with their exercise goals and remind them of all those benefits um, to, you know, what all of the um, exercise, how well it can do for you. Um, in the third trimester, well, actually, maybe probably in the second trimester, we talk about pelvic floor health um, and how Kegels um, and things like that can be beneficial during labor and also postpartum. Um, one of the preferred methods of Kegels is um, called like an elevator exercise where you do um, a Kegel and you kind of take take it up a notch each like you're going up the the flights of an elevator and then you come down slowly off of that. Um, there's lots of YouTube videos and um, the Natural Pregnancy book has some um, recommendations in that, but those are all wonderful um, ways to keep pelvic floor um, health um, and to do exercises for your pelvic floor. Um, also squatting is a really good recommendation for pelvic floor. Um, not only is it helping you open up your pelvis and stretch all those ligaments and things like that, but that's another good way for um, to exercise pelvic floor. And that can help you just during labor in general. Um, I know squatting was really beneficial for myself, so I know some people like to be in that position. Warning signs um, that you may be doing too much or that exercise may need to um, be cut back would be any type of vaginal bleeding, um, any type of pain um, after exercising and it'd be good to let your midwife know what kind of pain you experience so we can try to accommodate that. Um, any contractions, like if it causes contractions, we wanna know about that, especially if it's more than five in an hour, even if it's Braxton Hicks contractions. Any um, leaking of fluids, vaginal fluids, um, we definitely wanna know about that. Um, if you just become so out of breath that maybe, you know, need to cut back on that type of exercise, any dizziness, headache, um, weakness, or swelling, those are all things that may be warning signs that maybe you're doing too much or the exercise need to be, needs to be modified. Um, let's see, the other things that are, um, Things that you may want to avoid are like um, overheating, and that's a real possibility here in the desert. Um, definitely want to be doing your exercises somewhere that you're either able to stay fairly cool or um, after the sun's down or before the sun comes up. Um, also, contact sports such as like soccer or anything where you could have an abdominal uh, trauma, definitely something that you should probably avoid. Um, so yeah, um, just setting yourself up for a good routine is optimal. Um, I know for myself, it's a little bit easier if I just say, you know, I'm going to do 30 minutes every morning before work, or, um, if I can just set some type of routine that helps me and having someone for accountability, um, is helpful. Another great exercise in pregnancy, and this would be something I would definitely bring up in the third trimester, is um, water exercises, um, aqua hydrotherapy. Um, being in the water is just so nice whenever you're pregnant, especially uh, later on. It's lower, lower impact, high, high impact, but low impact. It's um, less stress on your body, and the buoyancy just takes all the pressure off of your lower back and things like that and swimming is great exercise so just doing a few laps here and then is a great exercise um that would be my prenatal um care plan thanks